Hello, my name is Carl Surrey and this is a video tutorial for the Facebook group called Fans of Serif Software. Now, in this tutorial I want to try and demonstrate to you how to make a fake neutral density shot. Now, neutral density filters go on the end of a camera and they allow you to take a, lo a much longer exposure so in a shot like this the, the parts that would stay still like the walls, the road, the pier, the beach would stay, would look as they are now but things that move like the clouds and the sea would become fuzzy and blurred because they've moved because of the long exposure and not everybody carries or has neutral density filters and much like myself so there is a way around to sort of faking that sort of image so I'm going to use this image here and the first step I want to do is to duplicate the image so if you come down to the layers display area here click on this background layer right click and then go up to duplicate and then just click OK you then have two layers and it is this top layer that we are now going to alter now this is an adaptation of a digital photo magazine tutorial but that was for using Photoshop and or elements now they used a blur effect they opened what was the radial blur tool and one of the options within that was called zoom zoom blur but they could also alter the position of that zoom blur which the version of the zoom blur in photo plus you can't alter the positions and the direction so the way around it I've found is to use motion blur so you come up to effects down to blur and as you can see they do have radial blur and zoom blur um, but they are separate tools not combined like they are in elements photoshop but like I said we're going to use motion blur now we're using motion blur because you can alter the direction or angle of the blur but first of all, let's reduce this distance slider down to zero. So that's zero means there is no blur. So this is a down to a matter of taste of how blurred you want your clouds or water to go. Like I said, you can click on this angle um, button here just click and hold and then you can swivel this around and alter the direction of the blur and the, or the motion of the clouds so as you can see you can get some fairly violent effects or much smoother effects depending on the angle in which you're pointing now as the clouds are sort of going in this direction I'm going to stick with coming in, in this direction and as you can see now the clouds are becoming blurrier as is the sea so I'll just click OK now what we now need to do is to bring back the this part of the, the beach and the wall like I explained earlier that wouldn't be blurred in this sort of image because they're not moving to do this we need to add a layer mask now down the bottom here in the lens display area one of the icons which is the fourth one along is add layer mask click that and then it will add a layer mask to this image which is white and it is the active part of this layer because it has a little white border around it if I click on the other icon on this layer which is the image the white border will move across 
but it is the layer mask that we need to be editing. Now what we are going to do is to paint black onto this white layer mask and the black will sort of hide the effect of the motion blur. So I have black already set as a foreground color. If yours is not black or you it's a, it's a different color completely, you can get back to black and white by clicking this reset colors button underneath. Or if it's white, white and black, you can just swap them around using this button above. So you need black as your foreground color. And when you come over to the brush tool, which is over here in on the left hand side in the tool toolbar, you can either press the B key on the keyboard or just click on the icon and then the brush tool will be selected. Now you can start with 100% opacity and you could probably do with a bigger brush size. So I'll just increase the size a bit. It's a bit better. So like I said, we're going to be painting black onto the white layer mask. So just painting black on here, as you can see, I'm bringing back the detail of the static area that we want to bring back. The beach and these breakwaters. I will lower the brush size using the square bracket keys on the keyboard and then just come along the pier reduce it down, I might zoom in a bit for this bit I mean you, I'm doing this quite quickly if you were doing this yourself you could take a bit more time and be a bit more careful than I'm being and then come back over to the town side over here now obviously these if I turn this on and off you can see what air areas are being blurred and you might if I want to bring back these lamps here or street lights it's probably easier to go over them fairly roughly so you can see what you're aiming for and then change the colors put white as your foreground color and then just paint a bit close to bring back some of that blur yeah so it doesn't look too good so I'll go back to black and get rid of some of this excess blur around the town area all right <coughs> all right this breakwater gr or concrete groin I just need to bring that back so I'll just do this quite roughly at first so then change the color to white and then be a bit more careful going along the edge to just blur it a bit right if I zoom out now oh yeah there's also um a marker here that's also got blurred so make sure that black is the color of the foreground and then just change between black and white to either blur or unblur if you see what I mean 
So f let's quickly try to show you how to make a fake neutral density image. I've not done it too brilliantly because I've, I've been doing it quickly but hopefully you can see what I was trying to do and you will take a bit more effort and time to get it correct. So, to exp so you would then flatten these layers by or merge them, come down to merge all and then go to save and save under a new name. Alright, what I want to do now is just to quickly show you another image where I'm going to do the same thing but very slightly differently. Now this is not a, a, that great an image but it was the only one that I could find of my images that demonstrates what I want to do. Because in this image, if you are using a neutral density filter, you would have some blurred movements in the plants of this field here, which is rapeseed, because of the wind blowing them. I took this at a faster shutter speed, so there's no movement. So again, I will duplicate this image. Add motion blur, that's effect. Uh, now I'm just going to look at the sky in this image. I'm not going to worry about what I'm going to do, what I'm doing with the crop. So I'm going to blur the sky quite a bit and click OK. Add the layer mask. Go to paintbrush, which is already selected. Get a bigger brush tool. Black is a foreground colour. Bring back these rapeseed and the distance for um, horizon between the land and the sky because that is the bit that is not moving. The actual image I was hoping to find be it online or elsewhere, was of like a field like this, but with a like a big um, shed or farm building. That would be the main static part of the image, but I haven't got any of those. So the static part of this image would be the horizon. So again, just doing it quickly and roughly. That is the sky blurred but not the bottom part of the image. So what I would do now is come to Layers, Merge, Merge All. Then I'll duplicate that again. And then add Blur, Motion Blur. Now this time I don't want as much blur because this time I'm looking at the rapeseed. I just want a bit of movement in the image. I'll put it on about 13, click OK, add the layer mask. Paintbrush tool is already selected, black is already selected. So now I will paint over the sky. I mean, I probably don't need to so much because this hasn't really added that much blur to the sky that if you're going to do this on your image you may have a much more effect to remove but again not going too close to the horizon because that is the static part of the image so again that's probably where I will leave that so I've added you know, I've done the two halves of this image differently. I may have just over blurred the rapeseed a bit too much there but I hope you can see the effect that I was trying to get to. Let me just lower this brush size down a bit and then go on to the next image which is 
of this concrete groin. Now this time I'm going to use the, oh no, first of all I've got to duplicate it. I must remember that part because you can't lay, really add a layer mask to the background layer because you're not blocking anything off because there's nothing underneath to block something off from. So you need a duplicate copy. So I'm going to come to effect. But I'm not going to use motion blur this time. I'm going to use the zoom blur. So you can see what I mean about you can't alter the direction so much. You can move this cross in the middle around a bit and it will have some effect. Let me increase that. So as you can see it's zooming out from this cross. So you do have some degree of movement and you might prefer the zoom blur to the motion blur. So all I'll do is click OK. Now if you wanted you could even add some motion blur to that blur. Where is I lost it? Motion blur. And then sort of blur that just a little bit more. Again, alter the angle of considering the sort of C's coming in this way. So as you can see, with both types of blur, that's a much more different type of image altogether. So again, add the layer mask. It's already got the brush tool, it's still on black. And then just paint on here to bring back the static part of the image, which is this groin. Again, like before, I'm not being too precise because I'm just trying to make this as quickly as possible. But I hope you get the idea of what it is I'm trying to do here. Oops, getting there, almost there. I'll just switch over to white as a colour because I've that bit there should be a bit blurred. Right, go back to black, and I will reduce the brush size down. Oh, come on. For some reason it doesn't want to use the B key, it keeps stopping me from using it. I don't know why. Probably because I'm trying to go too quickly. Um, so if I turn this top layer on and off, you can see I've got this marker out here. So I'm just going to bring that back in because that would be a static object. Just change colours over to white, zoom in a bit and put back some of that blur. You could even lower the opacity so you're not affecting it so much when you get close. Just need to blur this water at the end of the groin. And as you can see that I am sort of not taking too much time and effort to get this 100% correct. I'm just trying to give you an idea of what you can do. And I will leave it at that, I think, because it gives you the idea of different ways of getting a fake neutral density image. Um, you could, if you wanted to, it boosts some of the colours. So you could, uh, say, add either the hue saturation or the vibrance. Because if you were doing a neutral density proper image, you got you can they can be a bit brighter and a bit more colourful um, because of the 
shutter being open much longer. Um, so you know, it could be something like that. Um, it's more down to your own personal taste. So then I could just merge these layers and then save under a new name. So you've got three different images there with varying degrees of blur, motion blur or zoom blur that I hope gives you some idea of a way of doing a fake neutral density image. Right, that is all. Thank you very much. Goodbye.